Today we're going to look at using Universal Dashboard with Internet Information Server, or IIS as is more commonly known, um, in order to use the Windows authentication elements of that. So to do that, first of all, we're going to do an install of the Windows features which are required to have IIS up and running. And we're also going to install one other prerequisite, which is the .NET uh, 2.0 core so in this case we're going to use the uh, 2.1.15 installation and we're just going to run a quick loop through the installation process in order to make sure that if there's any issues downloading the file that it will re-download. I'm not expecting any but just it's kind of good practice to do that. And while I know what I'm doing here is probably not the most optimum, um, it is fine. I, I'll leave you guys to improve on scripts like this. Generally speaking, just want to get a working example off the ground. Now, since this process in general will take quite a while, uh, I'm going to kind of accelerate the video a little bit. But while I do that, let's look at a few other parts. Um, first of all, once we've finished the installation of IIS, we're going to do an import of the module and we're going to go ahead and disable anonymous. We're going to enable the Windows authentication. We're going to download Nuggety in order to be able to download the PowerShell modules successfully. We're going to extract that module into the IIS root folder. And then we're going to go ahead and make a modification to it, enabling the Windows forwarding. And then we're going to set up a test um, dashboard within it. And then finally, we're going to restart IIS in order to make sure that all the changes we've just done have taken effect. Now, since we're accelerating this to about oh, a thousand times its original speed, I'll tell you that this process in general took about six minutes on my VM. So most of you should probably expect between six to 15 minutes, depending on internet connection and other factors in terms of the amount of RAM or CPU that you've got assigned. But overall, it's relatively painless, um, and you probably would run a lot faster if you changed the way that you are pulling the file. I know, as an example, that this is the least efficient way of doing it, but hey, it's quick and easy to type in. Um, I would do it differently in future. Now, once that's finished, um, we can go ahead and run the installation part on the IS and the configuration. This is actually very quick to do because there's only really two elements of it. One of them is the download of the module itself, and the other one is the simple restart of the IS server. Now, IS is not the fastest thing in the world to restart. Um, I'd also like to point out at this moment that there are plenty of other things you could do in this script or add to this script. As an example, I didn't bother to create a SSL certificate, um, and frankly, if you're going to the point of having some form of certification, which is usually the reason for doing this in terms of logging in, etc. Um, then you'd want a certificate to make sure that those credentials are at least secure in terms of process. But that said, it's entirely down to you. Now with the restart successful, we can go ahead and open a web page and check to see if our dashboard that we've just generated loaded at all. This will be the first time that we get a chance to check whether the changes we made actually successful. So in this case we're just going to load up the local host and see what happens. And as you can see a dashboard has presented to us and in the top uh, right corner you can also see a logout option which kind of gives us an indication that it is actually logged in. And that finishes this video.